ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به وارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله والخير هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار عباد الله if we learn anything from this past year we learn how rapidly this world changes and these are changes that cause the parents to fear for the religion of their children and this is a fear that every parent should have especially living in this society when prophet yaqub alayhi salam entered egypt he saw the people were worshiping the fire and idols and so he became afraid for the religion of his children what will happen to it after he died am kuntum shuhada id hadara yaqub al maut id qala li banihi ma ta'buduna min ba'di qalu na'budu ilahak wa ilaha aba'ik ibrahim wa ismail wa ishaq ilahan wahida wa nahnu lahu muslimun or were you witnesses when death came to yaqub and he said to his sons what will you worship after me they said we shall worship your god and the god of your fathers ibrahim and ismail and ishaq one god and to him we submit as muslims if yaqub alayhi salam yaqwan fear for his children fear for their religion then do we fear for the religion of our children living in this society when there are over 4000 religions in the world today all of them have access to our children by way of the internet calling us to associate partners with Allah Ta'ala and Allah Ta'ala he said innahu man yushrik billah faqad harrama Allah alayhi al-jannah wa ma'wahu an-nar indeed whoever associates partners with Allah then Allah has made paradise haram for him and his abode shall be the hellfire how can we not fear for the religion of our children when today we see muslims standing lock on with black lives matter making the chant say her name and the co-founder of black lives matter she said openly this chant say her name is a call upon the dead the seeking help from the dead ancestors and he said it's a dua it's prayer and that's why when they get done they say asha amin call upon other than Allah Ta'ala when Allah Ta'ala he said wala tad'u ma Allah ilahan akhar la ilaha illa and do not call upon any deity other than Allah there is no deity worthy of worship except for him how can we not be afraid for our children ya khuan when we see that America is on the path to legalize all drugs not just marijuana Oregon was the first state to decriminalize the possession of small amounts of cocaine, heroin and meth. And the messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, he said istanibu al-khamr fa innaha miftahu al-kulli shab. He said stay away from intoxicants, drugs and alcohol, for indeed it is key to every evil. Will you not be afraid for your children, ya khuan, when we see the ultra-aggressive push by the LGBT community? I was in the store a couple of weeks ago and I saw a book entitled The Gay BCs teaching our children the alphabet through homosexuality. And that's even more frightening when you know the educators say begin to teach your kids the ABCs at age 2. And the messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, "Inna akhwafa ma akhafu ala ummati amla qawmi lut." He said the thing I fear most my ummah is homosexuality. 
And you know what's scary, Akwan? When you realize that the same strategies they use to remove Islam from the fabric of our families today is the same used to remove Islam from the Muslims that arrived in America during the transatlantic slave trade. Now, when the Muslims came here enslaved from Africa, many of them were practicing their religion. They were praying and they were fasting. And it took the slave owners several plots to remove Islam from their home. So what did they do? First, they removed the Arabic language from the Muslims. The African Muslims that came here, they spoke Arabic, but they removed it from them. And this is an old tactic to harm the Muslims. As Sheikh Uthimin, he said, before the independence of Algeria, the French ruler said, we will not prevail over the Algerians as long as they read the Quran and speak Arabic. We must remove the Quran from their presence and uproot Arabic from their tongue. Number two, the slaves were forced to marry non-Muslim women. They made the Muslim men slaves marry Christian women and pagan women. And they made the Muslim women marry the pagan and Christian men. Today, they don't have to force our youth to do that. Unfortunately, many of our Muslim youth, they choose to marry the non-Muslim women over the Muslim women. They choose to date them instead of marrying the Muslim women. Although Allah Ta'ala said, And indeed, the Muslim woman, even if she be a slave, she's better than the free pagan woman, even if she impresses you. And the same thing applies to our young women. Some of them will rather, rather date a pagan than to marry a Muslim man. But Allah Ta'ala said, وَلَا عَبْدُ الْمُؤْمِنْ خَيْرُ مِنْ مُشْرِكْ وَلَوْ أَعْجَبَكُمْ And the believing man, even if he be a slave, is better than the pagan man, even if you are impressed by him. Number three, they begin to change the names of the Muslims. When these interreligious couples had children, they forced them to take Anglo names. And the assignment of anglicized names rather than Islamic names to the children, when they had at least one Muslim parent, it was a subtle way of removing the identity of the Muslims. But now they don't force you to change your name. But you'll find a Muslim named Muhammad and they'll tell his friends, my name is Mo, so he can fit in. And number four, they had things that would impress the Muslim children. You know, the Muslims in Brazil had a sizable Muslim community. But they said in 1865, they saw most of the Muslim children embracing Christianity. Not because it was the truth, but because they saw the festivals and they liked the music and the dances. And they saw the only one who was different was their father. So they deemed him to be a liar and they went with the majority. The historians say, Yaquan, Orthodox Islam was in America brought by the enslaved Africans, but it didn't survive because they failed to transmit it to their children and convert non-Muslims. But think about this. Despite the fact that the Muslims came here from Africa and were enslaved in a foreign land, and all the above mentioned tactics were used to erase Islam from their families, along with murder, rape, and torture from their European oppressors, Despite all of this, it still took them two or three generations to get Islam out of their home. So think about this. If we as Muslim parents from a first generation, or those who came from a Muslim country who are raising your children here in a first generation, if we watch our children leave Islam, it means that we are losing Islam faster than the Muslims who came here in the transatlantic slave. Imagine that. And I understand it's hard to be a Muslim teenager in America in 2021. But Saudi Bilali, he was a Muslim teenager in America in the 1800s. He was abducted in Mali when he was 14 years old. And 60 years of enslavement later, his owner, James Hamilton Cooper, wrote about him saying, he is a strict Muslim. He abstains from liquor and he keeps the various fasts, especially Ramadan. And his, the owner of his son said, the last thing I heard him say is, Allah is God, Muhammad is the prophet. A teenager, fasting, staying away from drugs in the 1800s as a slave. You can't do that in 2021? Islam, Yaquan, is our legacy. Rather, it is the dua of our forefathers. There's a brother I studied with in Yemen named Abu Khalil. 
And he said, he and a brother from Jamaica were in Riyadh and they came across Sheikh Lou Haydan, one of the major scholars of our era. And when the brother from Jamaica, he said, Sheikh, I'm from Jamaica. Have you heard of Jamaica before? Sheikh Lou Haydan said, of course I heard of Jamaica. He said, that's that small country that sits beneath America close to Cuba. He said, this is where the first slave ships came to the Caribbean. And from the Caribbean, the slave ships went to North America. And listen to what Sheikh Lou Haydan said next. He said, no doubt, when your ancestors saw the horrors and oppression they were facing, they made du'a, and their du'a were answered in your generation, as Allah has guided you back to the religion of your forefathers. Allahu Akbar. So I ask you, Yaquan, it took us almost 200 years to get Islam back. Are we going to watch it go away from us in one generation? And in closing, Yaquan, in 1940, an elderly woman named Katie Brown, who was the great, great granddaughter of Bilali Muhammad, she says, I remember my grandfather and his wife, Fifi, and they would pray on a mat. And they were very particular about the time they would pray and very regular about the prayer. But now it was only a memory to her. I ask you, Yaquan, are our great grandchildren going to one day say, I remember my grandparents used to pray? Or are we setting the foundation so they can carry on the legacy of Islam? May Allah Ta'ala preserve Islam in our lineage and spread Islam in America. And may Allah Ta'ala have mercy upon us. Walhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala Nabi Muhammad.